Okay, so why, so air can hold uh, a, a maximum amount of vapor in it. It's like a sponge. You know, think of a sponge. You can start pouring water into the sponge and the sponge will hold water. At some point though, you saturate the sponge. And if you try to put more water in it, it just kind of drips out the bottom. And so air is kind of like that. You can start adding vapor to it, but at some point you saturate the air. And at that point, you can't put any more vapor, water vapor into the air. If you do, the water starts to condense and falls out as rain. Um, and so relative humidity tells you the fraction of this maximum amount of water you have. So 50% relative humidity means the air has half of the maximum it can hold at that temperature. At that temperature that's right. And 100% means it's, it's completely full. And as you mentioned, it's a strong function of temperature. As the air warms, its ability to hold water goes up very fast. And so as the atmosphere, as the climate warms, air can hold more water. And that means that we expect in a warmer climate, the atmosphere to be more humid in, in, term, in absolute terms, but if the relative humidity stays fixed. And because water vapor is itself a greenhouse gas, uh, that means that uh, we, that will give you additional warming in addition to the warming from carbon dioxide. You also get this kick from the increase in, in, in water vapor in the atmosphere. So if you double carbon dioxide and you leave everything else fixed, you'll get about two degrees Fahrenheit of warming um, globally average in the climate system. And that's a fair amount. But uh, when you include this water vapor feedback, it will double to triple that. So you'll end up getting four to six degrees of warming just from the increase in water vapor that accompanies the initial increase in temperature for carbon dioxide. So you see that the feedbacks are as important, if not more important, than the direct warming of carbon dioxide, which is something that I think not a lot of people really appreciate. But it's one of the reasons why scientists spend so much time trying to understand the feedbacks. I think, we've, I think for water vapor, we've basically resolved the problem in the favor of sort of the mainstream theory that the atmosphere will become moister as the climate warms and that's going to amplify the warming. And we, we base that on sort of what you want to have. We have observations from the last few decades showing that when the climate warms, the atmosphere gets moister. We have theory we can explain with simple, uh, simple physical arguments why that's likely to happen. Um, and then if you put it into a climate model, you know, the climate model is sort of this this meat grinder that takes all the physics that we know and cranks it up. It, it reproduces the observations quite accurately. I mean, we do have a few data sets that go back several decades, and they do show about what you expect, that the uh, atmosphere is moistening about as much as you'd expect as the climate warms. So, so we really have all the bases covered, and there's essentially no argument, no evidence that the atmosphere is going to dry out as the climate warms.